Now, I know there's a lot of folks out there that do not deal with land, don't deal with more rural properties, and you're more in, in urban properties. So I'm going to jump over to an area. I think this is in uh, just south of L.A., I believe, in an area. Actually, we'll zoom out just so you all can see. Uh, yeah, so there's Huntington Beach. Uh, we're down here south of L.A., and I'm going to show you what has been pretty enlightening for a lot of the commercial real estate folks and a lot of the more um, the more industrial commercial folks on the call or on, that, that are on the call and the people who have seen the um, that have seen the product. I'm going to click on this risk index, and you can see right away this oil and gas contamination thing jumps it through the roof. It's a 90 out of 100. Industrial contamination is 18 out of 100. Have high natural earthquakes. We're in Southern California, so everyone should probably be aware of that. This index, from what we've seen, unless you're running a phase one type of report, and for the residential folks on the call, for some of the property owners that are more rural and ag, you may not even know what a, a phase one report is. The commercial industrial folks certainly do. A phase one report is something that's typically done after a, a, a contract or after a property has gone under contract, uh, might even been some exchange of down payments or things like that, but the process has started. The initial due diligence phase has done and you've gone to where you're actually starting to spend money. And if you're not spending money, you're spending a lot of time, if your time is money. And now you're starting to maybe call in a phase one report where you're going and trying to find, you're hiring a private consultant to go and find what is the likelihood of oil and gas contamination on this site? Is this something that I should be worried about before I actually go and buy the property? Now, we do not call our report a phase one report. It has everything in it that a phase one report has, along with a lot of other things. But I'm going to show you why this is really impactful for anybody, even if you're buying a house or selling houses, you're flipping houses, that's what, what market you're in. Nobody knows about this oil and gas contamination or industrial contamination until they get into and they start hiring private contractors and things like that. So if I turn this data on, I'm going to go back to oil and gas, and I'm going to click that oil and gas button. These little black dots, these are all abandoned oil and gas wells. Okay. So if I click the contamination tab, uh, tab, there you go. You can get the abandoned oil and gas wells. Those will populate, populate, but also you're going to get contamination sites. So if I zoom out, you're going to start to see uh, these little sites here. This is a contamination site. Um, there's not too many down in this area. There's a ton of abandoned oil and gas wells. But if I zoom out, you're going to see a high concentration of these contamination sites. Uh, and then what is going to be coming here in probably the next three or four weeks are abandoned storage tanks. We are also gonna have those populated and up on the site as well. There are I think, close to 2 million of those located across the United States. Most of those are in urban areas. Most of those are in areas where commercial, industrial, and um, believe it or not, a lot of residential folks um, where a lot of their business is conducted. But I want to go back to one thing here. I'm going to click back into property reports, and I want to get an understanding if, if I let's say I'm a building uh, tenant, or if I own this, if I own this building, or if I'm maybe leasing this building out, what potential is there for me to to maybe make money off of solar energy? So I can click that solar energy tab, and again, automatically a ton of data is loaded. You can see all of those distribution lines, all those transmission lines. Uh, substations, things like that. But what's really interesting is when I click on the rooftop solar component, it's going to run the same algorithm that did for the land-based mounting system. So how many panels can you put there? What's the price of the energy? What's the local incentives? All of the things that an engineer would run. I'm getting the same exact result for this building rooftop. And it's telling me how big the rooftop is, how many panels I could put on the rooftop, and the most important thing, how much revenue could I potentially generate by putting solar panels on this rooftop? How many tons of carbon dioxide could I, could I, is this offsetting every year? How much energy is this producing? How many megawatt hours? And what the site capacity is. 
all of that is ran as if an engineer, an electrical engineer had just ran that analysis for you based on all of that technical data. You have that, you have that ability for every single site, every single building in the United States using Landau. 